you by chance? Are you by chance from China? Um, well, I was born in Hong Kong, <laughs> so um, pretty close. Yeah, um, I'm 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 living over here in uh, California. Okay. Well, the reason I asked is because my former supervisor at Macy's, the last mm -hmm. one that I had at Macy's, this was her. She would always talk about her new year in January. Oh yeah. And how you know. Um, she would take this as her time for holiday. She would work through all of Christmas. Let us. Oh, okay, yeah. Off, and then this would be her time to take off to celebrate the holiday, mm -hmm. the holiday and New Year and everything. And so that's where I made that connection. Okay, I see. Yeah, I I, I was thinking, you know, taking time off from work this week, but there's there's a lot going on <laughs> that I wanna be kept up to date with. So <laughs> maybe uh, next year. <laughs> maybe next year. You have to do something special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, in a, on a weekend or something to celebrate. Yeah, it's especially, you know, since just the last one or two years with the pandemic, there hasn't been really a lot of these. Like usually we have like carnivals and festivity around our community during the, around this time, but this year, I think they brought it back. I know there's a carnival around here that's doing, uh, you know, a little celebration to bring in the new year. So it, it's, it's great that, you know, COVID is lifting and it's improving now. That's good. That That's really, really good. And so, yeah. again, um, happy holidays to you. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to stop talking before I get a, a beating. I, I, I don't think you're, you're Air Force, so it's not possible. If it was Marines, maybe, then I think we can have a conversation. But uh, my Air Force were in tad. But I've been I've been waiting all week. And first of all, good to see everyone. Uh, I know some of you guys are being impacted by the snow and the severe weather that is happening. I wish everybody to be safe. That's first priority. Uh, second priority, let's communicate. All right, uh, and we'll go from there. Um, before I jump, I want to pick on someone real quick. Uh, any major milestones? Because I've been waiting for this all week. We any unbox the cabinets. Oh, Justin, <laughs> just took my thunder away. I was literally, you were my suspect for the day because I wanted to know <laughs> how you were able to convince your wife. You were, so tell us, we want to know. I Well, we unbox the cabinets. There's still a lot that has to get done. I mean, I told her, I said, we just got to, you know, rip out the old kitchen, paint everything, rewire stuff, put in the new kitchen, cabinets, flooring, countertop, and, and then we're done. Just a couple more days. We're done. So Listen, I, don't, I have some reason. <laughs> I don't believe you because the way you speak with so much authority, I told her. That's what happened <laughs> in my household. It's the other way around. I'm being told what to do, <laughs> when to do it, and how to do it. So one day before we leave you're gonna to have to put your wife on for us okay how awesome of a husband you are we just want to know i tell her yeah. every day how lucky she is so it's, yeah. it's uh, you know this her. is what he tells us it would be an interesting story <laughs> when she's on the line <laughs> you said it very well and uh, i don't know if there's any pranksters in this class but you know we can do some detective work and find her email and just kind of leak i said let's leak the video it's just a leak. I didn't say we're gonna do it. We're just gonna leak can it. You, just can boost. you believe what Justin said? Uh, <laughs> and then, and then if we see the pillow next to the couch, we know exactly what happened. And blankets. We know he's been demoted, right? <laughs> we know he's been demoted. That's what I'm looking for. If he fits a background, we know that he's trying to hide something. So, Justin, all right, hang in there. Anyway, I'm three minutes over, but I hope everybody's doing well. How are we doing? Yes. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. 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 So let's get started. Let's, it's great to see all of everybody. Um, I don't know if you're having any major milestones. I want to know, but if you're not, uh, just being alive is a milestone. So how about that? Um, Tracy's trying to get your attention. Oh, Tracy. Okay. Okay. I've been, because of my grades for the past semester or the mm -hmm. past term, I've been nominated for the National Society of Leadership and Success, and that happened a few days ago. Nice. 
Oh, wow. Congrats. Congrats. Oh, superstar. See, I, oh, I, I knew it. I knew it. it wasn't a coincidence that you're Air Force. I just knew it, you know? Just the, well, the best and then the yeah. rest. Yeah, yeah, Nicole, hang in there, okay? I think we still have room. We still have room in the Air Force for second best. All right, let's go. Um, be nice. Be nice to me. I, I can't sleep tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. Please be nice. We're going to reveal our name tomorrow. I just, this is going to be phenomenal. It's like the best. It should be like a national holiday. Literally, I think tomorrow should have been like a holiday for everyone in the U.S. because it's going to be the greatest day of our lives. Um, so which names do you think we should pick besides losers? If anybody says losers, um, it's going to hurt. So I just what, did do you, what do you mean you're picking your name? I'm not following. Oh, Darlene. Really, Darlene? You, you used to be my superstar. Like tomorrow, we were called the Washington football team because we had to change our name for the right reasons, which I agree with 100%. So our team is picking a new name, and our, uh, we're revealing it tomorrow. Uh -huh. Yeah, I we're, see. I see. We know, we're, the Red Hogs don't sound very flattering. Okay. Frozen Sounds like Hogs. a college football team. Yeah, it should be like the Armada or something. Okay. I like that. It has a nice ring to that. We're tough. I like the brigade too. That's that's pretty good. Okay. Commanders good. is a little mm, uh, are those the um, are those the actual names that it's yeah. been narrowed down to? Yes, exactly. This is our, okay. our final list. Okay. We can't and some of the red our fans, we can't sleep. I mean, we're getting like virtual parties, we're doing odds. It's it's, it's, it's sad because we don't have a life when it comes to our, our team. But anyway, going once, anybody want to guess what the name would be? So at least I give you some kudos points. Like, wow, how did you know? Then you tell me the lottery. Going once, going twice. I, I'm having a hinge he's going to be commander. <laughs> I really am having a hinge that uh, it's going to be one of those names because of Washington, D.C. Uh, it's going to be phenomenal. We can't wait. So God willing, next week you see me, or our team is going to have a new name. For those that do not care, I apologize, but it's our team. Um, so hopefully that we'll get new fortunes. And then after that. Hope you like your new name. Absolutely. And now I'm informed. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, our game plan has been posted inside the, the chat. And ladies and gentlemen, let's rock and roll, right? So tonight, uh, again, last week was really tough. It was very overwhelming, if I can use that term. Um, I saw the facial expression, frustration, probably is another word, but we got through it, right? We got through it. And thank you so much for being an amazing trooper and just kind of indulging what the expectations are and hopefully uh, you, able, you survived because the fact that you're on the call today is a sign that we made it through that time. So with that said, you have an active discussion post and this is actually one of my favorite discussion posts, right? And many of you guys have already started, some have not. Um, it's really simple in the context that you're being given three organizations, we say a well-known business, which every time you hear the word known business, think of a profit, entity, uh, private business, and then uh, a prominent um, nonprofit. So the Red Cross of the world, Feed America of the world, uh, Salvation Army of the world, just some of the ones that it's easily recognizable, if I can use that term, 501c3, the major brands, uh, United, United Way, and so forth. And then uh, a, a, I say a state, local, and a national government entity, or you can call it a uh, public sector, where you can come in and kind of in a few sentences, right? We say literally two to three sentences, but if you want to make it a paragraph, that's phenomenal. Uh, that talks about an appropriate investment project that you will recommend for this entity to engage in, right? So it's just the, the exercise to kind of show you that either the state, nonprofit, and a well-known business, the process that they take to evaluate an investment is quite the same. That was the point of this exercise, to kind of engage the creative mind of many of your peers. And you'd be surprised how creative your peers uh, have ideas that can even go very, very long way if those companies are being represented here. 
So it's a nice exercise to engage in. So that's it. So you're taking the nonprofit sector, the public sector, which would be you know either state, local, or national, and then a private sector, also known as well business, and then provide an innovative idea or an investment that they should engage in to enhance their standing, aka their position in the market. Okay. One strategic or one for each? I wasn't clear. Sure. So uh, it'll be one for each, right? So if you have nonprofit, you introduce it, then provide two sentences about what that investment project should be. Okay. Would, would the investment project something that the company hasn't done yet? Is it would it have to be something new? or okay. something that they already did? Sure, in this case, it has to be something new. Something new, okay. Exactly, that you can think of, right? So now the creative part of this exercise is you actually thinking of the idea. So recycling what they have done wouldn't help us too much in this exercise. So it would have to be something that you're thinking that, you know what, I think they should engage in this, All right? So I have the examples for you. So if you look at the highlight, is the core investment proposal that we're proposing, right? So eBay, and I think in all sensitivity, we all can agree that eBay is a very well-known business, right? Based on so many matrices. So it could be one investment could be for them to beef up their cybersecurity technology part of their business, right? Um, now, if your pedigree helps you that they've already have done it, don't lose too much sleep over it, right? Um, just propose it. And if they have done it, great. Uh, for God's sake, I'm not cross-checking to see if they have done it. Just the fact that, that you can think of something that you didn't even know they did, it speaks a lot of credence of your genius on that part. So don't lose sleep on it. Have they done it, haven't done it? If you wanna do a quick cross-check, that's phenomenal. Please take care of that. And then nonprofit, right? So again, we're back to YMCA. I think we all can make an argument that YMCA is a very credible, nonprofit, and then them being able to partner with the Habitat for Humanity. If you know they're already doing it, great. If you didn't know, it makes you a genius that you're thinking of the same strategic investment that they can do. And then we can come back on the municipal level, uh, on the state level, and then also on the federal level, thinking of some ideas that they can engage in. So there's this example um, of how schools can be engaged in less safe transport, and this actually happened very recently in Richmond, Virginia, where some school districts, because of the shortage, what was the major surge just to keep the conversation flowing? What happened in public schools directly? What was the major surge? The, uh, substitute teachers. Substitute was one. What was the other one? There was a huge shortage. They had a pain. Majority of them got a pain. Our favorite Favorite people. Your uh, audio, buzzer. your audio is coming in and out, Professor. Sorry about that. Uh, let me reposition. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing with my audio real quick. It was it was echoey. It sounded like you were getting an echo of some sort. It seems it's like feedback on somebody else is unmuted and their volume is too loud on the. Other is that it is? Sound check. Is it better now or the same? Better. 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 Right. I think, thank you so much. Sorry for that uh, feedback. Could you please repeat the question you were asking? I was asking a question. Yes, you were asking yeah. what the shortage was in schools. Senior, senior moment there. Yeah, and Justin was laughing at me really, really hard. Wow. Payback. You, you have no excuse. I'm much more senior than you. And I remember. Uh, payback would be horrible with those cabinets. Um, yeah. So there was a shortage in school bus drivers, right? Where to the point where they were given raises just to try to get them back into the school system, COVID. And some school district had this novel idea to even engage in Uber of the word and lift of the world to kind of shorten that. So that person also had a suggestion that that could be done. So that's just like the general example of that. It's very simple. I use simple in a very nice way. Just it, it's, 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 kind of fun, it's kind of fun just to think about any three company organizations 
that you want to provide an investment for. Uh, I'm not going to go into great detail on this for those that are just wondering in the back of their mind that when you're talking about investment appraisal or technique, what are the steps that goes into it? And I actually kind of actually use this particular slides for my clients. And on the quantitative side, we've already done it, right? Uh, anytime you want to assess if a project or an investment is going to be viable, uh, from the quantitative perspective, there were some metrics that we've already went over. So that's on the left-hand side. So don't forget, you do not have to do it for the discussion. This is just innovation in practice. I said just in practice, like how to actually, it's practical. So the firms will go through the quantitative piece of the technique, which is to look at net present value because it will engage in finances, uh, internal rate of return, and then the payback period, which are some of the most common ones that we know. And then your accountants can give you other matrix that you can measure to see if this project is going to be well done. And then for the capital budget inside, we have a few buckets that we look at, right? So does this new project or investment match the corporate objectives? This is where we talked about, is it a priority for YMCA to do this? Is it a priority for eBay? Is it a priority for Google? Just any of these major brands that you want to pick. It has to be a priority, right? In alignment with your ethos. If it's not aligned with the ethos, guess what? They're, they're going to punt. Um, so have a good idea, realize uh, for the need for the project, right? And then look for suitable projects. So sometimes looking at feasibility study. Uh, many of these things have already been done by somebody else. So best practice, always good when you're assessing an investment project. And I need to move my screen. And then number four, we look at Oh, excuse me, number three, identify and consider alternatives, right? So these are what we talked about in the last week. What's your next best case alternative, aka your opportunity to cost? You engage in that conversation. And then step four, I tell my clients that we have to engage some level of financial analysis, which is the quantitative side. And then again, looking at the alternatives, right? Everything in investment proposal or innovation, we look at alternatives. If we don't do this, then what, right? And then choose the project to undertake, you monitor it, and then you carry it out. And this is where your project managers come in, and this is where you do your evaluation and so forth. So this is just an FYI. Just if you're ever interested and say, I have a great idea, I want to pitch it to a company, I think it will help. Back of the envelope, this is the process that many of them will follow. Of course, there's other processes, but this is some of the best processes that they will follow. Okay, just FYI, just to enhance the application. This is going to be fun for you a little bit. Um, this is my last slide on this, and then we're going to get into our rubric. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just let this digest for a moment, and I'm going to go somewhere. Uh, many of our MBA students work in the nonprofit sector, especially in the healthcare that I've been able to map over the years, and look at executive compensation. And we're going to try to keep this within scope. And I'm picking on Red Cross. So the CEO of Red Cross makes $455,000 a year. Oh my God. And it's a nonprofit. That's equivalent with Paribus syllabus, right? Holding the perks constant. That is more than the president of the United States of America. The CEO of American Red Cross makes more than the president of the United States of America. Now, the aggregate could be more because if you add all his expenditure, his lifestyle, the Air Force One, that number is going to go up, excluding those benefits. But on the face value, we're talking about $455,000 for a nonprofit. And then if you look on the hospital side, some executives for a nonprofit hospital, which the mandate is to maximize social good and perhaps break even because they can't maximize profit. 21 million plus, 18 million. And these are not exaggerated numbers, ladies and gentlemen. That is insane. And the reason I'm bringing this up is many of my colleagues and including my peers on this call believe that nonprofit don't make money. Or if I go into nonprofit, it's not, I can't make a living. Not true, not true. So for you to keep your job, if you're an executive on, uh, at a nonprofit, you have to innovate. You got to find creative way to bring in donors. You got to find creative way to deliver your services to your end users. And it's all about innovation. And many 
of my colleagues, like we, we, we spin our heads, like how do you keep innovating, especially if you're a nonprofit and look how much you're getting paid. It's amazing. So let's talk about that a little bit. Any feedback, if you're in a nonprofit sector, please help me out. If you're amazed or you already knew, share some feedback with me, please. I'll be, really, I'll be delighted. Goodwill CEO makes the same as American Red Cross. Goodwill, you know, the store, everybody brings their stuff they don't need to resell to those who need it. Half a million bucks. That's insane. Is, is there a flip side to this argument? I mean, I just want to spark a small conversation. Is, is it pay for service? Is it pay, pay for quality talent? Or there should be some level of sensitivity when it comes down to the line worker? Because how much does really a goodwill worker actually make? Some of them are transit, meaning that they try to give them community service work. Some of them are minimum wage, but then the executive is making almost a half a million, million dollars. <laughs> There, there is no comparison. And the jump even across the C-suite is significant from any other C to the CEO. The CEO is light years ahead of any other C-level. So do we, so the, the, he, does, he or she doesn't vote their salary, so it's the board. So how does that compensation packet work when we're talking about we want talent? But does the talent should differ from private sector and public sector? Should it, the compensation differ? No? No? Did anything surprise anybody here? Like, was anybody like, oh my God, I had no idea? This definitely surprised me because it, it just as a coincidence, my wife has been looking for other employment and she's been looking in the nonprofit sector and I said those exact words to her. I was like, you're not gonna make any money. <laughs> so <laughs> like, this is, it is eye opening to see this. Sure. Keep in mind, that's just at the CEO level. And then there's a huge gap between that and anyone that actually works. No offense to the CEO. I agree, Darlene. No, I was just about to say the same thing. I agree. I think the people that actually work the hardest are not getting compensated to make the CEO look good. Interesting. Right. Right. And it's just it's just food for thought because many of you will be picking different um, nonprofits to provide innovation for. I just wanna spark that creative thought in your mind that they are being paid to be creative, to think, and now how far it trickles down to their deputies and so forth. You know, that's a different day conversation, but just, this is the reality. And so when you hear it in the, line, in the mainstream that the CEO of Goodwill, to borrow Darlene's thought, makes more than the president of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, that's a fact. It's not an opinion, it's a fact. And let's make sure that it's value for money um, and we'll go from there. If, if they're adding value to the organization, if they're increasing donation by seven folds, then they marry their salary. So I think that's the dichotomy that you have to put together, right? And just position it side by side to see where we go from there. All right, just food for thought. I'm a nerd. I just want to put that slide <laughs> out there. All right, let's go. Let's go. And then the last one, I needed to use this to tease someone for my next project for you. Um, and please, there's no, there's no pun intended here, but I'm going somewhere with this. So um, in the US, what's our currency? What do we use? I want to kill two birds with one stone here. What do we USD. use in the US? The US, oh. the US, right? That's our currency. And in, in Canada? Mm. I know they use Canadian dollars. Okay, that's exactly. I don't know what they're called, but they're but, Canadian dollars. Ma'am, trust your gut. It's called the Canadian dollar. <laughs> right? That's exactly what they're calling. So trust your gut. And uh, no, she's no longer there, right? So Angela Merkel uh, is no longer there. So she, she just left a few months ago or a month ago. So in Germany, what did they use? Euro. Euro. Okay. And Jacob Zuma is no longer there. My slide is definitely out of date. I mean, this, the data is out of date, but I just wanted to use the country and the conversation for my lesson, not the how, how, how recent those presidents, those people are. Um, South Africa, what did they use? Starts with an R, if I remember. Okay, they, they use the RAN. Okay. 
and uh, Shinto Abe is no longer there for, for Japan. What does Japan use? Yen. Exactly, thank you very much. Okay, and then uh, Turkey? Anybody wanna find out? Emmanuel Macron, uh, okay, let's go to Emmanuel Macron over in France. No, what, what, what do they use in France? They use the Euro too, right? No, I'm gonna be, trust yourself, exactly. And uh, Theresa May is no longer there. We have Boris Johnson. What, is, what do they use in the UK? Um, Phenomenal. And our good friend, Mr. Putin, what, what do they use over there? Starts with an R. Rubles? Exactly. <laughs> All, right. All right. Price is right. Uh, prego, prego, my Italians. Now they can't elect their president. They're having some challenges there. Uh, what do they use in Italy? They use the euro uh, too. It's probably the euro. Right, right. It's part of the eurozone. And then uh, our neighbor, Mexico. What do we use over there? Oh, excuse me. I apologize. Uh, India. Uh, I jumped. I jumped ahead. What do we use in India? It's a rupee. The ruby, right? Modi's still there now. And China. Uh, one. I think that's how you pronounce it. Phenomenal. And then obviously, this is just a piggyback off my slide about the compensation. And the and reason we say Donald Trump, again, no political stripes here, I say that with respect, our uh, presidents are entitled to their salary. Uh, he actually wanted to do a good service to our taxpayers and not take a salary. So that's why we have $1. It's no pun intended. It's actually it was real. Um, I can't say he didn't need the money. He's a multi-billionaire, but he's rightfully entitled to his salary because he worked for it. But uh, that's why you see one there. It's not a political punch or anything like that. He actually forfeited. He came out publicly said that I'm going to turn down his salary. And so it was a very symbolic gesture. It, it saved taxpayers money. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do an exercise on currency. We have a whole chapter or we have a whole discussion board. So I just wanted to kind of prick our brain a little bit around currency and then just kind of prepare yourself for that. All right. Excellent, we're doing good, we're doing good. All right, so now, so soon, right? We're in milestone number two, and I'm gonna do this in two parts. If you saw the agenda, uh, we're gonna tease it a little bit tonight because I wanna keep tonight light. Uh, yesterday was, last week was extremely heavy in content. So tonight I just wanna sprinkle some few concepts and then we walk away, right? God willing, we should be able to close on time for the first time, but if the discussion is robust, why now let's continue. Our, our, our flow. So we're in milestone number two, and it does have one calculation component. So I'm gonna do a few slides that get to the calculation and then I'll fire off my PowerPoints. And then you just keep it for two nights. So two nights, we're gonna use this for two weeks if I can use that term, uh, we're gonna use the same slides, okay? So you're gonna have that. Uh, if you're taking heavy notes, just know that it will come to you. And when I ask you to kind of focus on this area, just know what the area to focus on. But next week, you can come back for clarification if you start your paper this week. Because this week, the only thing you have is a rest week where you have a discussion post, which is extremely light, in my humble opinion. What are the company's most significant internal risk and opportunities related to the project? How might they affect your financial estimates and how will you address them, support your response with some specific examples? So let's not make an assumption that we all know what these type of risks are. So we're talking about the type of risks that are internal. So if we're, if, if your memory can go back to your prerequisite, prerequisite, uh, prerequisite class that you had before me, uh, we discussed some internal risks and linked it to SWAT, right? I've always said SWAT is broken into two components. So all you're doing in this session, right, is to identify a handful, right, of internal risk that you can research in your paper. That's, that's the only thing this block is asking you, okay? And how might they affect your financial estimates and on the qualitative side, don't do on the quantitative side, right? Just explain. And for memory's sake, 
internal risk, right? If we're looking at internal risk, we're looking at the following financial matrix, things that they can control, okay? So anything that the company is actually responsible for is what they can control. And then in your paper, I'm gonna give you a list that you can use in a moment. In your paper for this milestone too, I wanna correct some small things. So start that section by defining what internal risk is broadly. I'll have a header that says internal risk directly below weight. I would make, make an assumption that I have no clue what internal risk is. And you'd probably be right. Okay, what is that? And a very broad definition. And then internal risk has a laundry of lists and we're gonna go through them in a moment, okay? Pick a handful. And I'm using the word significant, the most significant internal risk and opportunities. So the risk is plural, more than one. So if you give me one, two, it's something, but let's do five and seven. I know the rubric doesn't say five and seven. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very, very sensitive to that, but it gives you proficiency because a company doesn't have only one or two internal risk. It's a basket. I didn't ask you to give me 15. I didn't ask you to give me two, just a nice range that you can be able to explain because it gives you content in your paper. And how may they impact your financial estimates? Provide some hypothetical examples. And I'm gonna show you that in a moment. So these are the three bullet points that I'm looking for in that section to kind of break down what the rubric was saying. Identify the most significant internal risk and opportunities related to the project. So what are some of these internal risks that we need to be aware of? That's the opportunity. What are some of the we're facing right now? That's the most significant. And then how, in a hypothetical sense, would it mess with my numbers? That's another word, nice way for saying the impact. Now, I'll ask for questions in a moment. I just wanna show you what are some of your options that you can select from, right? So policy, contracting, financial reporting, risk management program, human resource management, go uh, governance, right? clinical practices, IT, information technology, even document management, all of it are some components of what we call internal risk. Now, in your research, you can find more than that's on this list. This list is not absolute. It's just to get you started. Is that fair? Um, I wouldn't want you to think, okay, you have to use these bullet points that I have here. It's not fair. It stifles your learning. Now, let me open it up before I open up for some feedback and some clarification. On the right-hand side, this is FYI. Since you are doing an international expansion, I owe, it, I owe this to you. Where, for those that are not aware, if especially if you pick financial reporting as one of your major internal risks, which is for a lot of companies, and somebody asks you, which financial statement structure standards are you using? And you say gap, whoa, there's a small disconnect. Many US companies, and again, I'm not an accountant. So my accountants on this call, please help me out a little bit. In the US, for the US domicile companies, and I say domicile, companies that are registered, bona fide American companies that um, the US is their home base, now they can have subsidiaries all across the world, but they report financially, they're held accountable, like in Delaware, for example, because that's where most companies are registered. We use what we call GAP, right? Genuinely accepted accounting principles. That's not the same in the UK. That's not the same in many European countries or any other countries that decide to use international financial reporting standards. So the standards of how you report your financials differ around the world. It's a very important concept to know. Many of my students think the world globally, everybody uses GAP. No, we, it's only domicile to US-based companies. That's just FYI on the right-hand side. Because I don't want you to be misled. Now, ask me questions, please. Is there anything around internal risk that you will need clarification? Like, how is it our internal risk and how do we mitigate it? What are some examples? I'm more than delighted to explain. If I don't know, Charlie would do it for me because he, he gets paid the big bucks. 
he shares my salary. I wish. <laughs> okay, yeah. my question would be um, the business continuity plan. How do we how do we assess that as an internal? Okay, so the business continuity plan, right, is if, for lack of better words, I, I just can't think of a better example. Uh, crisis management, right, is to be able as an executive to say, okay, if this happens, I call it the contingency plan, how do we mitigate? So in the banking space, right, we had what we call a BAT, right, when I was at Bank of America. So just in case this happens, we had a binder to say, we're going to do A, B, and C, okay? If we got robbed, this is what we're going to do. If there was a bank run, every depositor came for their money, this is what we're going to do. If, for example, our server goes down and all of our sensitive data is compromised, aka social security, date of birth, this is what we're going to do. So it's a contingency plan for the business to continue, if I can use that definition in the word, right? So it's just, if I, I just know a better word to use that maybe my, uh, my little daughter can understand. It's like, it's the family plan, right? Evacuation plan. That's the best way I can say it. Like, if just in case there's a fire drill, this is where we go. And it's posted somewhere. Companies have a continuity plan. If the CEO, I can't think of a better example, I apologize, gets kidnapped, what do we do? It's not succession planning, it's contingency, crisis management. Supply logistics, Tracy, it's a perfect example of crisis management. We are in a semiconductor crisis. What's your contingency plan? Okay, I hope I did justice. Okay, any of anybody else? Going once. So we, we are all on the same page when it comes to different types of uh, internal risk. When you're any, when you're saying pick for five five for seven, you're saying five or seven of these sub bullets, or uh, five or seven of the bullets, and then you were explaining each one of the sub bullets. Okay, great question. So clarification, you don't have to pick all my, my bullets. This is just a starting point. So let's assume in that, uh, Justin, you said, okay, Biz, I'm gonna go ahead and pick IT, right? Underneath this security and the disruption, right? That's some bullet point where you can discuss those two types of risk. And maybe you can, in your research, you can find about five more underneath it, explain it. So you're not boxed in that you have to describe every single subtopic underneath IT. Or when you get to financial reporting, right? Okay, maybe I'm gonna pick about the credit risk, like uh, liquidity risk, tax return, and call it a day. And that's the starting point. But in your research, you can come back and say, no, I found more uh, financial reporting irregularities that need to be addressed as a risk. This is just a starting point. I don't wanna box you in. Good question. Okay. Very good question. Anybody else? Um, Tracy? Tracy? Oh, I just want to add, I wanted to add something and I typed it in. Um, when I've been doing the research for um, the paper last week, I went to um, Edgar. You know, when you go in um, www.sec.gov, and if you put in your company name on on the co on the company filings, yes ma'am. Um, and you don't click to the right, click just click below it. Then mm -hmm. it brings up the manager's report, and they have an exhaustive list of the risks on so, on that because it's their report. Right. Great information. And if you wouldn't mind, you, have you already put it in the chat? Because I, I heard you make reference to the chat. I did. I put it in the chat. That's where Justin. I found it in the end. Just not Thank you. specific. But Thank you, I'll, I'll just put it now. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ms. Tracy. Jessica. I would how also are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing phenomenal. Today's my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Can you, you mind checking the chat for me? Yeah, no problem. Great, I'm very grateful for that. Okay, so good question, everyone. So anything on internal risk? Going once, going twice. 
So, all right. Then our opposite of internal risk would be what we call external factor, right? Where are these risks that we can't control with broad, I mean, with quotations, right? Uh, so how do you address significant qualitative? I think that concept has come up many, many times since week one, risk outside the company that might affect the project success. Give specific examples, for example, how my culture or the politics in that target country affect the proposed investment, financial success, natural disasters. How have you planned to address these risks, right? So let's unpack that. So it's the same bandwidth that we're using for internal risk. We're gonna do the same thing here. So for this situation, we're ask, I'm asking you to, again, start the second part of your paper will be external risk. Directly underneath it, define what external risk is in a very broad term as part of your introduction. And immediately below it, start discussing what Justin was making reference to, a few key points. What are those external risks, those opportunities that we want to look at? We like to see examples, right? So for example, okay, that gives you evidence of how these risks might, will impact your, exp uh, your expansion. So you can be futuristic if you like, or you can state the fact as it is today. The facts as it is today, the country's going through an election. Hello, that's gonna have some impact if possible on the risk. The country is projected to have an election in year 2024. That's a futuristic risk. How are we gonna address that? That provides that for me on, on, on D. And then if any remedies, so if you wanna be, have a magic wand, say how can the company address this? It could be hypothetical, but let's make sure that it has some reason around it. Now, if we're gonna look at external factors, I will break them into three buckets. Every single time somebody asks me, sir, what are some external factors? My mind goes to basic supply and demand, and then the environment. So the environment are the ones that we always say the national disaster, uh, tourism, war, just something outside that scope, right? Uh, regulatory changes. So regulatory changes could be, for example, that might impact the environment, pollution, right? How much excess waste that I'm dealing with as regulatory changes can impact business risk. And then environment, don't think of environment only as, for lack of better words, dealing with the earth, okay? A greenery. Environment is literally the enabling environment. We use the term the enabling climate or space. I, I want to use the word space. That allows your business to thrive because I can't use the word environment to define environment. So every country that you're going to go into, especially when you go into a lot of emerging countries, they use this term a lot. It's very, very famous. We are creating an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. That's an example of that. But oh, Jim, you just won me over. Um, you're creating an enabling environment for the business to be successful. Natural disasters, right, has an impact on the business being successful. Taxes, duties, quota, right? I was doing research this evening, and uh, let me pause for a moment. What's happening between Taiwan and China, just in case somebody's going to China? What's the challenge that the U.S. is having with Taiwan and China? They have different political structures, or did. Okay. Anybody want to build on that for me? Uh, well, China is run by uh, central government. Okay. And Taiwan is not. Mm -hmm. Okay. One more. <laughs> No, no, no. We're, we're in this together. We're putting the pieces together. Anybody else? I I think it's sort of almost similar to how Russia sees sort of Ukraine as one of their own people, and China feels the same way with Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And they, I guess, China basically want Taiwan to be like under them, and you know, Taiwan want the independent from China. So. China is kind of pushing towards what, similar to how, you know, Russia don't want NATO to influence Ukraine, kind of that similarity there. 
Well said. Well said, everyone. All the, all the three uh, submissions has merit. You know, and just to piggyback on the last statement, so we're talking about history is very, very important to put everything in context, right? So in the 1940s, um, Taiwan pulled away from China, if I can just use that very lame narrative, and uh, sees them as an, an island. You know, China sees it as an island that is part of their territory. So uh, any country that recognizes the sovereignty of Taiwan, you're, China's not happy with you. Right. So Joe Biden of the world and Trump did it, Obama did it, all the predecessors did it. We have to play a very tight rope with how we interact with Taiwan. But Taiwan produces 92% of the world's chips. I mean, Taiwan is a manufacturing hub when it comes to conductors. I mean, it's out of this world what their manufacturing capacity is when it comes to technical. So we also need Taiwan as much as China needs Taiwan and vice versa. So that's a huge strain on our relationship. Those kind of factors, right, are a huge external factor when it has to deal with potential war, regulation, duties, and tariffs. And we have to be able to manage those the relationship in those countries. So geopolitics, again, is coming up when you're dealing with the environment. Supply on the right-hand side. So external risk. And right now, all of us, with those that are in logistics, are dealing with this, right? So being able to provide quality, uh, being able to ensure that you have a contractual arrangement with your supplier. Um, if the vessel that you're dealing with, ensure that it has the right, right channels. These are all some of the potential supply issues that can interrupt external risk. Now on the other side of it, there's also external risk that you can't control on the demand side, right? Uh, the volatility of the consumer behavior is extremely important, right? Uh, the shrub life cycle of a particular product or service, and then the change in the consumer behavior that is out of your control because you're not in vogue anymore, for lack of better words, is important. So again, this is just a starting point. Ladies and gentlemen, my external factors are not the gospel. Uh, I encourage you to go out and find other factors that you can use, but the structure still stays the same introduce it, find five or seven key points, right? So under supply, there's a lot of key points there. There's about six, in my humble opinion. Under environment, there's about five, right? And then you can mix and, mix and, uh, mix and match where your uh, external factors that you want to describe, describe in your research. Um, any questions there or clarification? Going once. All right. Okay. Uh, if this is easier, it's the same as over. I just kind of put copy and paste some simpler uh, external risk that you can also find in your research just to kind of bounce it off. If it's regulation, reputation, competition, partnership, you know, funding, natural disasters, these are some of the bullet points that are also available. This is the last two slides, then we're done. Um, so in your paper, so I've given you internal, external risk, internal risk, that's the first two headers of your paper, milestone two. The third header has a little bit, I use the word a little bit of some calculation, okay? But the good news is that guess what? You've already done it, you've done it. If you guys remember um, my fast talk in that in week six, you're gonna say thank you. When Charlie, we all were talking about analyzing the financials. Now, guess what? We're already in week six. This assignment is for week six. That makes sense? Milestone, I want to be very clear, right? Milestone two is due in week six. So next week will be week six, and we're going to pick back up again. So that's why I was making reference that I wanted to build you up and then practice, practice. And when you get to week six, it makes progress, OK? So let's break it down a little bit. So uh, alternative uh, financial scenarios, alternate financial scenarios in this session, discuss the sensitivity. That's the key, right? We're gonna do some sensitivity analysis of financial projections, which you've already done in different scenarios. Be sure to address, how would your projected financial performance change if sales fall 20% short or 20% higher than your base assumption? What does your analysis of the two scenarios imply on the proposed investment? Does it change anything? Justify your response. 
We'll do the net present value, hint, hint. Internal rate of return, payback values or your base scenario and the sales valuation scenarios above apply to the proposed investment. Be sure to explain how time value of money affects your calculation and analysis. I, I wanna slow down a little bit. I'm hoping with all sensitivity that some of these terminology looks and sounds very familiar, true or false. I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of head shaking, yeah, yeah. So imagine if we, we didn't attack this in week two or three, whatever it was, we'd be like, what are we talking about? So now indulge me a little bit as always to break it down what the deliverables are. In this part of the session, show me, don't tell me. When I use the word narrative in your feedback, narrative is just explaining what the numbers mean. That's a narrative. So if I, in your section, I just see a narrative explanation of what net present value is, internal rate of return, it doesn't meet the standard. We have to calculate the analysis. We have an analysis, right? And it says, be sure to explain how the time value of money affects your calculations and analysis. We have to calculate. That's all I'm trying to say. We have to calculate. So in this session, in your Excel spreadsheet, there should be an attachment with the following calculation. Net present value, internal rate of return, and payback period using your numbers and forecasting your cash flow. Now you have a projection that you've already created. Use those numbers to safeguard what we have done. You can make up your internal rate of return, you can make up your interest rate. Now you're doing your project now. The first example was hypothetical of a XYZ company. So don't feel intimidated. Just take your projections, analyze your cash flow because you have a base year and you have a projection year that in the year, I'm using an example, in the year 2022, we're gonna make this X number of money. That's a cash flow. Break down your cash flow because that number adds up to be your revenue. Once you have a bona fide cash flow, and then you have a projected some credible interest rate, and then whatever kind of required internal rate of return you want that you think is reasonable for your industry and your company, then you can run those analysis. That's step one. I would like to see, it's not me, based on what the rubric is saying, Let's calculate these sensitive analysis, which AKA is your financial matrix. And then explain like we did it before. Is it good? Is it bad? Does it justify your, your proposed investment? That's where your narrative comes in. Then the last component, then I wanna take a deep breath and let you ask me some questions on, on the top paragraph before I go to the paper format is, where it says, now you're gonna run some scenario. So scenario simply means I'm gonna do a 20% increase. I'm gonna do a 20% decrease of a 20%. So what you're gonna do is gonna take the base year, right? You're gonna take the base years, leave them alone. The projections is what you're gonna run your 20% across at three years. You can give one five year, you can give one seven year, and then the rest. So the projected years, you're gonna run your, your ratios across the top. And this should be logical. I don't wanna say intuitive, I apologize. It should be chronological because if, help me out a little bit, please, because I wanna get some small engagement. If my revenue goes up by 20% and I spread it, what else will have to change? Expenses. I'm sorry. Expenses. Phenomenal, exactly, right? Because in a perfect, we don't live in a perfect world. Holding that loss constant. It's very rare that a company can tell you that their revenue increased by 7% unless they have capacity that's not being utilized, right? That nothing else changing their business model. Mm, I have a hard time believing that 
unless they are really, really low in capacity. No company in this world operates at 99% capacity. There's some last. We want to do that. Imagine a factory that has the machine running nonstop. No, it needs to be retooled, take one offline, change some belts, and bring another one online. That's how it works. Same thing in business. So you're right. Expenses will have to reflect. That's scenario one. So in your spreadsheet, I have a screenshot for you that you can use as a model. So you have sensitive analysis, 20% increase. Okay, I ran 20% across. I can use any variation that I want. 5%, 5% again, and then 10%. It adds up to be 20. Ladies and gentlemen, we are okay. Expenses, you can do the same. Mix up the expense ratio, and then your profit margin, everything else in your calculation will impact because it's integrated with your Excel, like we did in uh, week one and two. Scenario two, you do the opposite. Now your projection numbers falls by 20%. Same rationale. I'm taking my projected numbers and I'm manipulating 20% across revenue. And I don't know who said it, one of your colleagues says expenses will also have to change. And then you see what the bottom line looks like. Any questions on the top before I go to the paper format? That's what we're asking. Is this anything new to anybody, like super, super new besides the 20%? Have I said a word that you've never heard before? Just to clarify, you're saying, I, I think I got it, but you're saying 20% cumulative. Or, so if we're doing three-year projections, the three years have to equal 20% at the end, or you're saying 20% a year? Phenomenal, cumulative. Cumulative, okay. Good question. I'm proud of you guys. I know this stuff is not easy. You're hanging in there. We're almost there. We're halfway through the course. So we're getting there. Going once. I'm not changing the slide. But I'm just want to go to my next bullet point. Okay. Okay. And then in this session, right, what I would love to see is not a place where you cut and paste your Excel spreadsheet into the paper. It's not quite professional, I'm sorry. Hmm? You can make reference to your appendix or exhibit, okay? Makes it very scholarly. In the bottom, sir, refer to appendix A and B, wow. Or in your paper, you embed it in your paper, right? And then you make reference to figure one below. So it says, introduce the parameters you will use to discuss the sensitivity of your financial projections with a two-year scenario. So parameters simply explain that looking at the behavior of my revenue, what happened? What, were the, what triggered revenue to increase by 7%? We're back to assumptions again, right? Discuss something that triggered it. Oh, just because it's for this exercise, I'm being silly, right? It's, I know you're not going to do that but explain what caused the increase or the decrease. If anything, discuss the analysis of your financial projections and assumptions and the impact that it may have on your sales and expenses. In other words, all I'm asking you to do here is, okay, now that I've manipulated these numbers, is it, what impact did it have on my decision? To expand to this country or not to expand, if we had a literally a ruffle of 20% up or down. And then point number C, as I already alluded to, provide a spreadsheet, exhibit one, two, and three, right? And just explain the impact. So if you wanna do, you don't have to have three exhibits, but I'm just saying just as an example, just provide me your exhibits of your financial, uh, Manipulation of 20%. You have another exhibit of your uh, financial matrix. There was about three of them that we calculated. You can lump them all up together, right? And then use financial projection data or reasonable cutoff period, required uh, cash flow, uh, return, excuse me, and then the cash flow periods. And just being able to infuse your financial matrix into your narrative and you are covered. 
So the narrative doesn't have to be like six paragraph. It could be really, really short. But what I'm looking for is the fact that you've been able to calculate and kind of explain. I use the word kind of explain like what happened. Your financial matrix is one and then your scenarios. Clarification, please. Or questions. I am gonna send this out to you. And we're gonna use it next week again. So the same slides, uh, I may edit a little bit. If I do edit it, I'll let you know the ones that I edit, but I am gonna bring the slides back. Oh, question. What is mm -hmm. the reasonable cutoff in B where it says use financial projection data and reasonable cutoff? Uh, sure, what matrix that shows us that? What matrix do we calculate that would give us an idea of what a reasonable cutoff is? That's the um, payback period. The payback period. Ooh, the, the one. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, the yeah. cutoff is how, when do I want to see my investment returns to me? How many years? Casey, I would do a cartwheel for you any day because that's how much I love you learning, all right? So I don't mind making a fool of myself for you because and you're spot on, exactly. Okay, good job. And hint, hint, use Charlie's slide, uh, uh, spreadsheet too, right? That can also help. Oh, we planned okay. on it. Awesome, yeah. awesome. If any you have questions? any questions on it, please let me know. Oh, we will, I will. Put your email in the chat, Charlie. Awesome. This is the beauty of learning, ladies and gentlemen. All of you guys collaborating, it's, it puts a smile on my face. Okay. Do we have any other questions on this? Is there anything else? I want to labor and love and for you. So is there anything else that I can clarify? Take me now. If I don't know it, I'll go find and bring it back. Go on once. Go on twice. All right. So... All right, uh, for my visual learners and non-visual learners, uh, apologize is a little bit blurry. I just stretched that a little bit, but I think you, you will get the point, right? This is the visual representation of what I'm talking about. If you do a 20% fall, right? Have an exhibit that says 20% fall and run your numbers, right? So this should look very, very familiar unless you add more widgets on the left-hand side on your line items, revenue, expenses, gross profit, is what we we're asked to calculate net income. That's the bare minimum, right? It doesn't, you get full points for that. That's exactly. But some of our assignment, I want you to go deeper because it was going to help you with your consolidated financials that's coming up next. You manipulate those numbers. And just for clarification, please indulge me. Am I manipulating my base years, my historical numbers? Am I touching them? Thank you. Nicole shaking her head like, absolutely not. Barbara's like, please, no, don't get him mad. Um, yeah, we're not touching it, right? We're not touching it. We're just touching the projected numbers we did. And sooner or later, I'm giving you a hint. We're going to do another projection of 70 years coming very, very soon just to practice this concept. So we're building on this document. That's what I mean when I say consolidated. We're going to build on this. On the right-hand side, as you can see, the 20% increase, right? So those are my exhibits. Then what we're asking you to do now is just to explain what happened to revenue and expenses. Your bottom line changed, your income changed, and 20% rise and fall is very reasonable, right? It's one of those middle of the pack that can happen to any organization that's a mature business any day. So we want to do that sensitivity analysis. Somebody can put different numbers, but the university wanted you to do 20%, so I support 20%. Here, we're not talking about our project. We're talking about the forecasts we did in week two. OK, so was that you, darling? I yeah. didn't see the name. Okay, so it's now me. I want to clarify. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. I want to clarify something. So it is the project. So those numbers that we pull, those numbers from the money you pull from your company, so if you had Nordstrom, those projections you did was on Nordstrom. 
So now you're just building on top of that. So it's all of Nordstrom, not just the money for your division. So um, when you say your division, what, expand on that for me, Barbara. Well, I'm expanding out to Switzerland <laughs> with the new division. Um, uh, so would they have their own financial reporting, a separate division? Oh, I, I see what you're saying right now. Answer your question directly, no. I don't know if that ties into uh, with uh, Darlene. So no, it's for the entire aggregate of the business units, right? Okay. So can I be nerdy for one second, not to confuse, but just it's a very important point. So when you look at companies like Nordstrom, but I like Disney, I always like to use Disney as a case in point. Disney has different business units, right? But when they report their revenue, it's an aggregate revenue, all put together. Then when you go into the fine print, then you identify what ESPN made, what the cruise line made, what the studios made. They're put together, but then they abstract the business units. So if you want to figure out this business unit, you pull, by the end of the day, their numbers are together, especially if they're a public traded company. So back to Darlene. So Darlene, you're starting with the projections that we did in week two and one, I believe, week one and two, I'm sorry, and you're building on that. So it's the same company that you picked. It's the same company, the financials that you did to do your sensitivity analysis in your spreadsheet. And to Barbara's point, it's all of the companies. So it's not just when you're expanding to Switzerland, what that looks like. Now, when you're called as a C-suite to defend because you're the C chief operating officer or the business developer executive for the international, you defend your financials. But then the accountant takes it and puts it together. So every business unit defends their financials. So if you're expanding the international unit, you bring your revenue for the international unit alone and then they aggregate it together to make an annual report. But in the appendix or the footprint, then they can justify their business units individually. That's what makes a conglomerate or a multinational. That's where we get that from. Any other clarification? I'm just giving you screenshots here. This is just screenshots of what you've already done and how you manipulate the numbers. How are we doing? Going once. How are we feeling? Pulse check. How are we feeling? Thumbs up. A lot better than last week. <laughs> yeah. Jim is like a lot, lot better. Okay. Um, I'm just be, I'm being redundant right now. It's just the same concept, right? I've already, I just wanted to give you some screenshots. So just go ahead and insert that into your paper via appendix, but not the whole entire spreadsheet of Excel, just there in that section, it will be a little bit unprofessional, okay? I'm gonna stop here because I, I will need something for next week, but you already have it. So if you wanna go ahead and go for it, you can. And this is my last slide and then we are done. Um, let me not be so rude, I apologize again. Please forgive me. Any questions on this? No, very straightforward. And in, in our, when we did the projections before we had two years basis, it's still okay, two years, you got four on here. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just for point of clarification, remember we're only gonna be touching the what years? Forecast. Thank you so much. Yes, 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 so please don't, um, that's your base here is gone. We, there's nothing we can do about it. It's been audited, so we're okay. All right, so let me build you up. Next week is gonna be, again, clarification on milestone number two. I'm not gonna alter my slides that much, but one of your peers is gonna help me out. Um, I'm hungry, so let's start from the top and work our way to the right. Which ones of these I'm using, for example, the the image that has Pizza Hut in the middle. Which one of these can we owe? If me and Jim want to start a business, which one can we owe? Who can you own? I didn't yeah. follow. O W N or O W E? 
OWN, like we can say, look, we are big players and we owe a McDonald's. We don't, we don't own the company, the brand itself, but we own part of it. Which, com which of these can we own? McDonald's, oh. Wendy's, mm -hmm. uh, Burger King. Can you any on the exchange? All of them, right? They're all franchises. Who said that? Darlene. Any Darlene. on the exchange? Is okay. what I said. Okay, so all of those we can own, we can own, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. Because they're franchises. So anybody with the right number, if you're willing to engage in an operating agreement and be listen to the semantics and be the franchisee or the franchise or how do we say is it a franchisee or franchise or franchisee mm -hmm. look e thank you that's where we get employer and employee so we become the franchisee right so the parent company is in franchise or and then we use the operating agreement as a framework to ensure that we don't change it to the arches being blue can i change the arches to blue if i'm a franchise owner no, I can't. And, and if I own Papa John's, the Papa John's in New Hampshire will taste the same as the Papa John's in Richmond, Virginia, right? With some little small varieties of, because of the water. I don't know, I'm just teasing. But it will be the same brand because it's a franchise. Okay. Okay, um, so you were talking about a franchise not being a stockholder. I yes. thank you for that clarification. You got it, you got it. Uh, which... Out of the three, which one is licensed? Which of these images are considered to be licensed? Like I can license it and put it on sport. I can put on toys. I can put on a shirt. Which, which are licensed? Top right. Corner. Top right. Yeah, I can definitely. I can license that. One. Um, what's another uh, strategic alliance or strategic alliance? Like they came together to meet their customers' needs. Which images? Is that Samsung, Sony, or Starbucks and Target? Starbucks and Target. Yeah, yep. Starbucks, Target. Yeah. It was a nice alliance. They came together where I'm shopping before I check out and go to Starbucks. Banks try to do that depending on where you are in the country. Some banks will operate inside of some Walmarts or some major outlets, and you have that. And then uh, a JV, right? There could be some joint venture agreement between Sony and uh, Samsung. And ladies and gentlemen, these are all examples of what we call business combinations, right? So we're not talking about like a, a combination dial for our locker, but now that you're in the MBA, we, talk, we call these concepts business combination. And you have a discussion post coming up that you have to explain in great detail and provide examples of what all these are. And Darlene has been violent told that she's going to co-teach with us. But Darlene, because of your answers, they were so spot on. Um, I, I hope you wouldn't mind being my co-pilot unless one of your peers is going to bail you out. And I will send you my notes. And Darlene hates me now. And she's completely silent. Darlene, how are, how are we doing? You were doing great till I said that, right? <laughs> Well, surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> you got it. You're, you're a trooper. Right? Uh, we can't wait. And we're going to be rooting for you. Or well, unless anybody want to take it away from Darlene. Darlene, do you want to give it away? Sure. If someone would, feels that they would uh, be benefited by doing it, absolutely. I'd let them do it. No problem. Take one for the team and all that. Oh, uh, Jessica, you're smiling big. How about that? You want to take it, Nicole? I'm all set. It sounds like everyone in the chat wants Darlene to do it. You got it. <laughs> oh, Darlene, we love you. Uh, unanimous decision. All right, Darlene, it's all yours. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting. We're super excited what you're going to pull together. They're just curious what will come out of my mouth. Okay. It's going to be nothing but genius. How about that? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done. Um, please. Help me out. Any last minute questions regarding milestone number two? I've introduced it. I want to give you a, a light night. Uh, your discussion posts. Any questions on that?
go on once, go on twice. All right. I'm smiling because I get to go back to uh, my nerd uh, Washington football team uh, chat group and see what name is trending right now. And I can tell them that I got out of class early. Uh, I won't tell that to my boss. My boss thinks I'm still working, so that's okay. Um, so we're good. So if anybody, everybody can do me a favor and uh, type in all the emails and then uh, we'll exit. We did well, um, didn't we? 820, we did well. Lilia did have to step out earlier, but she did send her email at the top of the chat. Um, if no. you could send the slides as well. Awesome, awesome. Oh, this is great. This is great. Can you guys imagine halfway through already? Some of you guys can't wait. Like, oh my God, I can't wait to exit this class. I'm going to miss <laughs> you guys. Uh, it's, it is hard to believe that this is week five. It went by yeah. pretty quickly. Absolutely. Uh, next, I'm just filtering time while people are typing their names. So please indulge me. Um, next term, I'm teaching leadership. Uh, 540, I think it's 540. Anybody taking leadership next course or already taking it? Already took it. Organizational behavior. Things organizational behavior. Uh, yeah. I have I, no idea what's next. The my advisor just put me in classes. I have no clue what's coming. Okay. <laughs> like, I just get an email like you know a couple weeks ahead of time. Hey, you're in this class. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go and do it. <laughs> I have no idea what's next. I can't wait for my review. Just like f f f f f f. <laughs> <laughs> So your advice tells you what to do, what class to take, and your wife does what now? <laughs> Let me add on that note. No, no, put him on mute, please. He just gave himself away. <laughs> just gave himself away. Uh, Miss Harvey, uh, let's close each other out. Uh, how, how are we feeling tonight compared to last night and last week? And what are your takeaways? Well, I'm feeling good. Honestly, this is good. Uh, sorry, technical difficulties. <laughs> this has been one of my most uh, challenging classes, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm getting it. Um, the This Tuesday night actually helps because um, it kind of clears up all of my questions or my doubts. Let me say that. And you're the, I can't say, uh, most encouraging cheerleader <laughs> saying that we got this, but um, sometimes I doubt that. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Oh, yeah, but I mean, I'm working my way on through it, so we'll see. <laughs> you got it. You're putting the effort in, right? And that's all we can ever ask for is effort. Yeah. So I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to do this and uh, work. So sometimes I'm doing this uh, teams. I'm in Central Time, so I'm doing this teams at work. So <laughs> hang in there. Well, we appreciate your effort and your contribution, and we're all rooting for you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you got it, well, Sean. All right, uh, Sean is silent on me for a moment. Maybe Sean is getting that line muted. Okay. All right, so let me go to Dylan. Any questions, clarification, takeaway, pulse check? No, I think uh, things are going well. I appreciate these uh, sessions. Last week was definitely a lot, so it's nice to roll into a little bit slower week. And I think it was... Uh, I was definitely surprised to look at some of the salaries of uh, the nonprofits. That surprised me a little bit. So that was kind of cool. Sure. Well, excellent. excellent. Thanks for your authentic feedback. Um, phenomenal. And uh, yeah, Angie. She typed it in the chat. Yeah. Okay. She typed it in the chat. She doesn't have a mic, but she says, feeling a lot more confident this week. I understand the expectations for the Milestone 2 paper where I had my doubts on deck. Phenomenal. All right, mission accomplished. Thank you, Angie. Sorry about your technical difficulty. And Charlie, Charlie, I, I skipped Nicole. Nicole, I'm sorry. Nicole. Fine. You can skip me. <laughs> 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 no, I feel good. Um, yeah, I feel good. I feel like this is really helpful. I like that you kind of go through in detail. So um, also, which class 
leadership you said like is it leading change or just leadership yeah. Since you ask, I can't punt. Yeah, so I'm just you curious. Like your own class, you don't even know. Can you guys see my screen? No. Okay, good. Because I'm, I'm inside my email, so I don't want to make one of those oops. Uh, Is it leading in an organization? Wait, do you get juicy emails? Is that what you're telling us? So, <laughs> go to the CIA guys now. So MBA 550, leading organization, exactly. I'll be, I'll be in a while. Oh, I already okay. taken it. You've already taken it? I've already taken it. Oh, no. You can take I it again. Sorry. I don't need oh. to take it again. <laughs> I have a very handsome face, so I don't think you guys know my CV. I'm busy. <laughs> I'll have to come in later, like in about 20 minutes. Okay, Great, fine. Like Charlie, yeah. you're not on mute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I did the video. Oh, my son's going to bed, so. I love it. I love it. You guys made me laugh. I needed that, so that's good. <laughs> Uh, Charlie, keep picking on me. I like it. What's your takeaway? <laughs> I uh, thank you for thank you for giving us a teaser of the uh, milestone too. It kind of gives us an idea of what's ahead. Um, I usually try not to think about those things until I've gotten at least this week's um, assignments done. So right now I'm thinking about the discussion post, which I probably won't be able to get to until Thursday night, unfortunately. But um, but giving us a teaser of milestone two knowing what's ahead of us for, you know, the calculations that we have to do, it's going to be pretty involved. So starting Monday. Awesome. But remember, yeah. you don't go for the work, work already. Have that much confidence in yourself, right? You've done the work. Now just yes, bring, thank you. Slide it I over. Did, if anybody needs that calculation sheet or needs an explanation, uh, I have it. Yeah, I want it. Excel. <laughs> I I'll, want the I'll, fancy I'll, one. I'll, what I'll do I want is the I'll one that it. turns red and green. Uh, I'll post it on on the discussion boards. I, 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 awesome. sent it, I sent it to you, Tracy. But if there's any explanation that you need, and uh, I'll, I'd be happy to do it. Would you be able to reply all to the email and just slap it in the email? Yes, I could do that. That would be probably thanks. Yeah, yeah awesome. awesome. You really awesome. do some fancy pants stuff with those spreadsheets, um, Charlie. Yeah. I actually do it for sort of a living. <laughs> so I use those, I, I do very similar things at work for uh, people who uh, need to do some calculations that I'm on the production floor, um, makes their life a lot easier. So I've been doing it for a long time and try to make it uh, as user-friendly as possible. Thank you for sharing. Of course. Just, Justin? Uh, besides yeah. on the calendar next week what the, yeah well, so yeah <laughs> uh no i think it, just to echo everyone's sentiments i think it is it is nice to get the to get the clear kind of expectation of what you're looking for specifically in the paper i always feel like we get the rubrics from professors and it's like kind of like okay do this and follow the rubric but then it's like well did i hit it exactly did i not hit it exactly so it's nice to get that it's almost like getting some insight into your brain on what you're looking for that's helpful Okay. All said. Awesome. Jim, how you doing, bud? I'm good. I think everyone pretty much uh, hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, wrapped up this 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 week's discussion. Just trying to get ahead for you yeah. know the milestone assignment. So it's nice to, like everyone else said, get a little preview this week and then next week kind of really dive in. So great stuff. Good stuff, uh, Barbara. Yeah, last week was brutal. <laughs> I, did. I was doing my paper to 1158. <laughs> so, I, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to not having a brutal week. <laughs> and looking at the uh, discussion board and I do agree. I, I really do love these um, Tuesday night sessions because I, you, you can get a feel for how you want the, the uh, assignment to be laid out. Whereas I agree, the rubrics can be very confusing. And this helps. Next week's co-instructor that gets paid all of my salary, $1. Darlene, we're super excited. Oh yeah, super. Yeah, thanks for the enthusiasm. I mean, I mean, I can see it. <laughs> 
You got this, Darlene. It's it's I care fun. My, my team name, <laughs> right? Yeah. So what did I learn? I learned that Washington is changing their name yet again. I learned that um, I volunteered to help with next week's lesson. Um, and what do I love about this? I love when we go out to the discussion boards and we're reading what people are writing that I can now put voices and faces to the words. And so it's not just a, a blank posting in the discussion, but I feel like I'm actually talking to people and having interchanges with people it makes all the difference to me. So thank you for this, Professor. It's, it's such a, a wonderful benefit to what is an excruciatingly painful course. Well, you know what? In life, pain it forward, right? So ditto, all right? This, a wise woman has spoken, so I just want to say, <clears throat> Justin, ditto. When they speak, we just ditto and we move on. So I'm trying to help you, Justin. I like you a lot. I'm really trying to help you because I'm having a hard time believing your wife is still not letting you, letting you free because that's, that's a miracle. Um, Jessica, close me out. I, I would just that. echo everything that everyone else has said. It's really nice putting faces to people's names. I've never had this before in other classes and I feel like I actually know my peers and I'm getting to know you as well. And it makes it so much easier to ask questions. No, I'm always fire away. I don't take my demeanor. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a teddy bear and my intention here is I want to help. So don't ever take my responses or my demeanor as, oh, no, no, we're in this together. I see you as my co-equal. Okay. All right. Mafang, the man celebrating the new year, having all the parties, <laughs> inviting us. Okay. What was your takeaway? Um, yeah. Uh, it was nice getting a perspective into milestone two and what's the expectation now. And it was good understanding what you expect in terms of the ex internal and external risk and <laughs> identifying what it is we need to get in there um, one one thing i found really interesting was that currency slide that you showed <laughs> it's, it's interesting just looking at the different uh salary that you know leaders of the world are being paid mm -hmm. and you know usa president i guess gets paid the most in that <laughs> in that list but i, I thought that was a pretty cool chart and Donald Trump paying one dollar. That's interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> so let's but, clarify. Yeah. He, chose, he chose not to receive his salary. He was entitled to four hundred thousand. He said mm. he didn't want the money, and rightfully so. If you're a multi-billionaire, um, yeah, that's that's a drop in the ocean. But it's a yeah. penny for him. That's <laughs> on the call. Some of us, I don't know about your pocket, but I would take it any day. I don't want the stress of the job, but I'll take the money any day. Yeah. Awesome. How well, thank long you. has that been? Four hundred thousand. It's been a long time. That salary hasn't changed, right? You're a genius. I have. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what I'm. Talking. I don't want to even comment on it. Yeah, it's been for a long time, Barbara. Let me borrow your words. Yeah, I know. <laughs> far back as Clinton, I've been hearing four hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, but it's not a change for inflation. But it's a sweet job, right? I mean, what do you actually pay? <laughs> right. So you get that for the rest of your life. I mean, it's a sweet cushion. So I think. But them at that level when they get there, I don't think they need four hundred thousand. I'm just saying that with humility. When they get to that level, both male and female, they have so much that four hundred thousand is just oh, I think I got paid this month. I wish a lot of us can say that, right? I think I got it paid, and don't, don't even check the picture. All right, um, my joke, my jokes are getting dry. So Tracy, what do we got? Save the best for last, and Tracy. Hey. It's not my birthday, Tracy. I use this every week when I want someone I know, to do But you know what? I'm going to say it anyway. And then I gave you the beer clap. You notice I gave you the beer thingy? Because, um, yeah, I thought you had a birthday the first week, of course. But I gave you the this beer thingy because, you know, you'd be watching football. You need this. You know. this but anyway, I just this learned from Google. I just learned that we made Google, okay? Our Eastern, our storm warning has made Google. It popped up on my phone how bad the storm is going to be for Eastern Missouri. So we made Google. Um, but really, I, this is my lifeblood, this class, all of you, because your questions, your inputs, going back and listening to the things that you asked and getting the answers 
And um, this has helped me to be able to formulate papers. This has helped me to understand concepts. You are all so valuable. I love your input. I love your questions. I love seeing your faces and hearing your voices. I felt so, I, like many have said, I, I felt so disconnected, confused, frustrated in my past courses because I couldn't, we couldn't connect like this. We couldn't ask, actually ask questions and get answers. And we didn't have the others asking questions that I didn't think of, you know? It's nice to hear other people ask questions and it's like, oh yeah, I, I didn't think of that. And I'm glad that they did. So I'm grateful for all of you. I'm wow. grateful to every one of you on this Zoom, really. Because I'm learning so much because for me, this was, the hardest this is my worst subject and so this is really thank you all so very much that's great well i think we can definitely draw the mic on that one right well said very passionate good summary i appreciate all of you guys prerequisites please stay safe right uh week six god willing we're going to connect again we're going to give darlene all of our undivided attention we're super excited on what she's going to cover and we're going to learn something from Darlene. Uh, it's going to be phenomenal. And then we're going to pick up on milestone number two. I got a few more slides, which you're already going to have in a few minutes. And then you can, if you want to go ahead and start it. And if you want to send uh, me your spreadsheet, I will try in reasonable time to get back to you. And then uh, we can continue. All right. Just make sure that you're on the right track. Again, remember, practice makes progress. Doesn't make it perfect, right? So let's just keep practicing and practicing, and we'll get there. I appreciate all of you guys. Good night. Good night. Thank hey, you. don't forget to send the slides before you go back to Washington naming. Oh, no, I mean, I like you to you said that statement. So, all right. So I'm going to send it right now before uh, we get the game. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.